Hi, my name's Charlie Wiltshire and I'm a researcher within the Speech and Brain Lab, which is headed up by Kate Watkins at the University of Oxford. We have a new paper out, which we're really excited about, so I wanted to create a quick video to walk you through the paper. This is just one project from a much larger project, and this one focuses on speech movement variability in people who stutter, and it's a vocal tract MRI study. So like I said, this is part of a much bigger study called INSTEP. This study is headed up by Kate Watkins and Jen Chesters. We also work on the project with Mairead Healy and Gabe Clare and myself. Okay, so it's a big study. There's more information about the whole study if you go to the general website, which is insteptrial.wordpress.com. For now, I'm just going to focus on this one section, the vocal tract imaging, just at the pre-stimulation uh, time point. So there's lots more to come. This study is just focusing on this aspect of it. So we've put this paper online and it's freely available for everyone to have a look at. It's on a server called SciArchive, and the address is here. I'll also put it in the comments below this video. This is a preprint, so this has not gone through the peer review process, which means that other academics will have a look and read our paper and they'll assess it for quality. This process will be done to this paper. It's currently being submitted to a journal. So this is the vocal tract imaging that I'm really excited about. I'll just show you a quick clip of what we can do whilst people are speaking in the scanner. So um, this is the person's brain. This is their nose, and this is their lips. So the person is facing to the left. And what we can do is we can record the movements of the speech organs, so the lips, the tongue here. Um, this is called the soft palate, and then your voice box down here, as people are talking. So here we go. These MRI sequences were created by Dr. Mark Chu, who's part of the Wellcome Centre for Integrative Neuroimaging here at Oxford. And he created a sequence that the scanner can use to reproduce these images. And there has a spatial resolution of two by two millimeters. So that means that every pixel that you can see here is two by two millimeters and a temporal resolution of 33.3 .3 frames per second. So what did we ask the participants to do in the scanner? Well, we asked them to say made up words. They were slightly strange. Um, these are an example of the words that we used. So we had three words or pseudo words that increased in length and phonological complexity. So those were Mab, Mab Shaib, Mab Phi Shabe, and then we had two words that were both four syllables long, but one was complex, Mab Shay Tai Doib, so that's quite hard to say, and simple, Mab T B B, that's a lot easier to say. And we took this from somebody who had previously done this type of task, and the paper is referenced here if you want to have a look at it. So the previous paper focused on the lips because previously that was all that could be recorded. Whereas now we're able to look at the whole vocal tract. But to start with, we've just chosen to have a look at the lips so we can compare results. Um, to look at the velum, also known as the soft palate. So if you wrung your tongue from your teeth, which you can't see here because they don't show up on the scan, all the way back along the roof of your mouth, you'll get to a soft structure, and that's called the velum and the soft palate. And we also wanted to have a look at the tongue movements here. So what do I mean by capturing variability then? So this is an example of a participant saying the word MAB in the scanner, and this is their lip movements. So each of these lines represents 
a single utterance of the word ma. You can see that here, this means that the lips are closed if it's low, and they're open if it's high. And this is the time it takes to say the word. So for example, here the lips are closed for the sound M. We then have to open them to make the sound A for Mab. And then we have to close them again to make the sound B. So you can see that each time you say it, your lips have to be closed, open, and then closed again. And we ask our participants to do this 10 times. So there's 10 different traces here. So what I mean by variability then is how different all of these lines are to each other. If I say the word Mab 10 times and I uh, move my lips in very similar ways each time, these uh, traces will be very close together. However, if I have a bit more variability in the way that I say Mab, they'll be more different. So that is our measure of variability in this case. When we scale that up to the different articulators, we've got the lip movements here, which is just what you've seen before. Tongue body, so how the tongue moves, the main bit of the tongue, and the velum, so that's the soft structure at the top of your mouth that I talked about. And then these are examples from three of the non words Mab, Mab Shay Tai Doib, and Mab TBB. So, for example, if we take Mab TBB, you can see that the lips are closed for the M, they open for the A, and they close again for the B. And then we have to add on TBB. So this is the T, and then the lips have to close again to make the B sound, and close again for the final B. We always have to stop each utterance when the lips are closed. That's why you don't see them open again for the E. So we stop here at the B sound. Okay, so our results then, what did we find? We found that overall, people who stutter had more variability in their speech compared to people who are typically fluent. And you can see that in this graph, which is in the paper. So people who stutter are plotted in red, and people who are typically fluent, so our control group, are plotted in blue. The thick lines in the middle show what the average is for that group. So this thick line represents the average for people who stutter when they produce the word MAB, so the one syllable word. And this is exactly the same for the people who are typically fluent group. You can see there's quite a lot of variation within all of the groups. They're quite a big spread between um, large variability and not much variability down here. But the crucial thing is that there's a difference between the groups for each of these non-words. And people who stutter tend to have higher variability than people who are typically fluent. Interestingly though, we didn't see an effect of how long or complicated the words were. So we expected that the longer words, like Mab Shay Tai Doib, which is shown here, would be produced with greater variability than a simple word, like Mab TBB. But interestingly, we didn't find that. There seemed to be a very similar amount of variability over all of the words that were produced. So that was the results for the lip. We also had a look at the tongue and the velum movements, and the picture is very similar. So there was greater variability, again, for people who stutter compared to people who are typically fluent between the groups. But it didn't seem to matter what word they were saying. Interestingly, we wanted to have a look at um, whether there was a relationship between stuttering severity and the amount of variability in a person's speech. So what we might predict is that people who have a more severe stutter may have more variable speech movements. However, we didn't find that. So here we have variability on the left with low variability at the bottom and high variability at the top. And then we have the stuttering um, severity, which is measured by a standardised instrument. And that goes from a moderate stutter up to very severe stutter, as classified by the SSI. And each of these dots represents a single participant. So 
what we would potentially expect to see if our hypothesis was correct is that people with a moderate stammer would have less variability and then a diagonal trend going up with more um, people with more severe stutters having more variability. However, that's not what we found. These dots um, show no relationship between the y-axis here, variability, and the x-axis here, stuttering severity. So that means that something else must be contributing to the variability that we see. It's independent of how severe the stuttering is. Now, apart from variability, we also looked at the duration of the utterances. So how long it takes a participant to say the word. This duration is measured in the number of frames. So remember there's 33 frames per second. So 60 here is going to be about two seconds. Now you can see that the scores, the duration scores, go up for both people who stutter and controls as the words get longer. That's exactly what we expect to see because it takes me a lot less time to say Mab than it does to say Mab Shay Tidoib. But what's interesting in this graph is the difference between the groups. You can see the difference here is negligible. Here there's a bit more difference and again here the difference grows and grows even more. So it seems like people who stutter slow down their speech compared to people who are typically fluent, particularly when the words get longer or more complex. So to sum up everything I've talked about, we showed that people who stutter show greater variability of articulated movement compared to people who are typically fluent. The complexity of the word did not affect the amount of variability that there was in the speech. Variability during these fluent uh, speech utterances does not correlate with stuttering severity. People who stutter slowed their speech more than people who are typically fluent when the words became more complex. So this indicates a general trait level difference in the control of the articulators between people who stutter and people who are typically fluent. What we can't tell is where the source of this variability comes from. But what we predict is that there's going to be a difference in how different brain areas communicate in people who stutter compared to people who typically uh, who are people who are typically fluent, and this difference in the way that the brain communicates may lead to greater variability, um, greater noise in the speech system, um, which contributes to variability, which may in turn contribute to stuttering. All that's left to say is a huge thank you to all of our participants who took part in this research and thank you for listening to this video. If you have any other questions, comments or want to chat about this research, then please do get in touch with us. All of the details are going to be on our website. And that's it from me.